Hey everybody, Chris Serino here from the Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be taking a close look at a really famous painting by artist John White made in 1585. John White traveled to the ill-fated colony of Roanoke and one of his jobs was to make watercolor paintings of what he saw. And this fishing scene is really one of the more iconic works that he produced during this time. So what I'm going to do is basically take you from top to bottom and look at some of the salient features of this really famous image. Okay, so the title of this image is The Manner of Their Fishing. And we're just going to go ahead and scan some of the images here to give you a, an overview of this painting. And then after that, we'll zero in on some of the individual images and explain what's going on here because there's a lot happening. This is a scene that White witnessed over multiple days. Um, so this isn't actually something that's happening at one individual time. It's more of a composite of different things that he witnessed during his stay on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So this scene depicts three different techniques that the Native Americans were using for fishing. One you can see up here near the top are these two gentlemen simply wading in the shallows with spears. And it's very interesting because Captain John Smith during his exploration of the bay encountered a very similar scene near the village of Akamak. He said he encountered some Indians hunting with spears tipped like bone, uh, like javelins with bone tipped spears. So imagine the water being clear enough and there being enough fish that you could simply wade in the shallows and spear them. And then coming over here to the left hand side, this is a, a type of trap that the native people had constructed. The English referred to this as a weir. Today, interestingly, we would call this a pound net. This is almost the exact same technology watermen use today. And the way this works is a fish would swim into this wall near the shoreline. And then the fish would try to get to deeper water and be led essentially into a box. And you can see if you look carefully, these fish are trapped within that box. What's great about this is once you're done doing the work to get this installed, it fishes around the clock even while you're sleeping. And once it's in the ground, it's a passive way to continuously get food. Down here, you can see the third technique. These Indians here are in a log canoe, a dugout canoe that was made by burning and scraping out large trees. You can see these gentlemen here have a fire in the middle. They would line the canoe with clay, make a fire, and this is something they would likely do at night. The bait fish would be attracted to the fire. The large fish would then come up to eat the bait fish. And there'd be somebody waiting with a net. You could see a net here off the stern of the canoe. You could see this gentleman here might be netting a fish right there. And you could, if you look carefully in the boat, they're clearly having a pretty successful run of fishing here this evening. And lastly, down here are just some of the different creatures that White recorded. This looks a lot like a hammerhead shark. Uh, this is probably a horseshoe crab. This may be a whelk. This almost certainly over here is a cardinal flower, which we still see in wetland areas today. Way up here, uh, some archaeologists, anthropologists have surmised this may be a sturgeon. And then some of these just look sort of like generic ocean-going fish. So a lot going on here. Some really fascinating details about how the native people were harvesting the abundant marine life off the coast. So to wrap up, the Native Americans living on the Chesapeake Bay or down here on estuaries in North Carolina were taking advantage of the rich marine life. In this image we see three techniques, spear fishing in the shallows, catching fish with ingenious traps that the English refer to as weirs, today we call pound nets, and also lighting fires in boats, attracting fish and netting them. Just an incredible abundance of food right off the shoreline, and that's why this was such a great place to live. That's it for today's lesson on Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. Hope you visit us to check out more of these great videos.